Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. What I'm going to be covering in today's video is I am going to be doing part 14 of my V-shaped guitar build. And specifically what that means is I'm going to be painting the guitar. So what I want to do is give you kind of an overview of what I'll be doing. And then I'm going to explain the products I'll be using as well as the tools. So let's get started. So to paint the guitar, the first thing I have to do is I have to spray a seal coat over the wood. And I know you're probably wondering why would I apply a seal coat when in uh, the last video I applied solar res grain uh, sealer. Well, the reason is, is because the solar res grain sealer was really intended just to fill the grain so that I would have a surface that would be absolutely smooth with no grain texture in it. However, if I were to apply paint directly to this surface, there's a chance that several things could go wrong. Number one, over time, the color could uh, change as a result of the paint's contact with both the wood and the solar res. So I want to put down a barrier coat to prevent that from happening. The second thing that could happen is even though I have sanded the surface, there's a possibility that the paint won't adhere as well to uh, the wood and the solar res. And eventually the paint could start to chip or even peel off. So what I want to do is apply the seal coat. And the seal coat that I'm going to use is very adhesive or adherent, and it will stick to just about anything, whether it's wood, metal, plastic, whatever. It sticks very well to it. But it's also going to provide that barrier coat. And furthermore, once it's dry, the surface that it, it, it leaves is uh, ideal for applying the paint to. So once I've applied the seal coat, and I'll probably do one, maybe two coats. I'll then apply the paint itself. And I'll probably apply uh, three to four coats of the color. And then once that has cured, I will then apply a clear protective coating. In this case, it's going to be a water-based 2K polyurethane with a flat matte finish. There are basically three products that I'll be applying. The first is the sealer. And this is a product from uh, Createx. It's their Otterborn sealer. And specifically, this is their 6002 sealer black. And like I said, it will provide a barrier coat. It will also provide a surface that is very adherent so that the paint will stick to it. And I won't ever have to worry about the paint somewhere down the road chipping or peeling off. And speaking of paint, I'll be using Createx airbrush colors. And specifically, this is their 5211 opaque black. So I'll spray probably three to four coats of this. And finally, I will then clear coat the whole thing to provide extra protection. And I'll be using Centurion. And this is a water-based 2K polyurethane. 2K means it's two-part. You have the main component, which is the polyurethane itself, and then there is a small addition of a, a catalyst. This is an isocyanate product which will react with the polyurethane and that causes it to dry faster and much, much harder than a regular 1K polyurethane. The tools that I'll be using are, first of all, my qual spray WB-125 spray gun. This is basically a, uh, it's a detail gun like you would use uh, to paint cars. And I'll be using a 1.2 millimeter needle and nozzle for this. Uh, this is a great gun. It works really well for spraying water-based colors. And I have it fitted with a filter and a regulator so I can control the PSI right at the gun. And when I spray the color, I'll be setting that PSI to about uh, uh, 25 pounds per square inch. And then to spray the clear coats, I'll be using my Earl X uh, 5500 spray system. And the reason why I use this for spraying the clear coats is because when I mix up the Centurion with the Catalyst, 
it's very, very thick. It's too thick to spray with my qual spray. So instead, I prefer to use the Earl X. Uh, that way I don't have to thin the product. And when you spray it uh, at its full viscosity, it uh, really creates a good, solid, hard, durable finish that cures very fast. If I thin it, it uh, functions a little bit differently. And of course, because this is an isocyanate 2K product, I'll of course be wearing my respirator, but I wear the respirator regardless of what I'm spraying. Even though this is a water-based product, or all the products I'm using are water-based, it's still a good idea to wear a respirator. And then uh, the spray gun itself will be connected to my little 10 gallon Harbor Freight compressor. And believe it or not, this thing works great. I can usually spray uh, about two, two and a half coats on an entire guitar before the tank empties. So it works really well for this and it was an economical way to uh, provide air to my spray gun. And then I'm going to be using my portable spray booth set up here. And this is just a homemade spray booth. I've talked about this in previous videos, so um, I'll put a link uh, either in the description or in a card up above so that you can go back and watch how I made this very simple, lightweight, portable, easy to store spray booth. And what really makes it nice is that around back I have a ventilation system and this sucks all of the overspray and dust out of that spray booth and then it shoots it outside. So what I'll do is I'll open this garage door just enough to uh, vent the booth outside. And of course when you open up a garage that always uh, increases the potential for dust to get in the garage. But what I have up here in the ceiling is a really large high powered dust extraction system. So that will help to mitigate some of that dust. Before I start to spray, what I'll do is I'll fire up my uh, ceiling mounted dust collection system and I'll let it run for about 10 to 15 minutes to suck all the dust out of the air. And it does a really good job of that. Then just as I'm about ready to spray, I'll crack the garage door just enough to vent uh, the spray booth itself. And then I'll spray the guitar, hang it up to dry, and then I'll close the garage door so that no dust gets in. The first thing that I've got to do is I've got to make sure that the surface is as clean as possible. So I'm going to spray it off with compressed air and that will remove a lot of the dust. I can also vacuum it as well. But then once that's done, the next thing I've got to do is uh, remove any surface oils and those can be the natural oils that occur in the wood as well as finger oils and you'll notice I'm wearing uh, nitro gloves here because I want to try to keep uh, my natural skin oils from depositing on the surface of the wood because oil in general is never a good uh, contaminant when it comes to applying finishes. I can always affect the way the finishes adhere and that really is true with either solvent based finishes uh, but it's really uh, especially true with water based finishes so those have got to be removed. The first product that I'm going to spray is Createx Sealer and since the guitar is going to be painted black I'm using black sealer and what I'm doing here is I'm running it through a filter to make sure that there aren't any particles that might uh, deposit on the surface when I go to spray it. At the end of this video I'm going to summarize some key rules of thumb when it comes to spraying. But the first thing I need to do is make sure that my gun is set up properly so I'll spray on some cardboard just to make sure everything is going to work right. And as you can see I'm wearing my respirator here even though it's a water-based finish. I don't want to breathe in any of these particles. And then once I'm ready to start spraying, I'll open up my garage door a bit and switch on my vent fan. And that'll help vent out some of the overspray that is going to occur as I spray. But I've set up my gun and my compressor to minimize the amount of overspray that you normally might experience. And this is an HVLP gun, so there isn't going to be a lot of overspray anyways. 
Typically I'll spray at least two coats, possibly up to four, uh, but usually no more than that. And I'll spray the entire body using the neck to hold it. And then I have to reposition the guitar so that I'm holding it by the pickup cavities. And that allows me to spray the headstock and the back of the neck as well. Now, as I just mentioned, I'll spray two to four coats and I'll spray these about 20 minutes apart. That way I don't have to scuff sand between coats. If I were to let the guitar sit for longer, say six to eight hours or overnight, then it would be a good idea to scuff sand before spraying additional coats. And this is what the guitar looks like after spraying three coats of the sealer. I have a pretty good idea of the surface quality, but what's really nice about using a sealer like this is that it will help you to see any flaws that may have escaped uh, detection earlier. Like I have a small divot here in the back where the glue seam is, and I have another one um, where I sanded the neck to body joint. So what I need to do is some spot sanding in order to correct those before I apply the paint because trying to cover those mistakes with paint isn't going to work. So what I'll do is I'll just lightly sand those areas to get them smooth with some 220 grit sandpaper. And I may have to apply a little bit of additional sealer uh, where I've made those repairs. But once that's done, I can then proceed on with applying the color coats. And here I'm uh, mixing up my color coat and I'm using Createx uh, flat black paint and I'm mixing into it their uh, 4011 a reducer which helps to thin it to the viscosity that's going to atomize really nicely. Then I can do some test spraying on some cardboard to make sure that I have the viscosity just right for my spray gun. And since I've reduced the paint to a thinner viscosity I'm able to use my smallest needle and nozzle for my spray gun which is like a 0.8 millimeter. And this allows the paint to atomize very nicely and lay down very, very smoothly. So I'll pretty much uh, approach spraying the same way I did with the sealer. I'll probably spray two to three coats, allowing about 20 minutes in between each coat so I don't have to scuff sand. And once I've finished spraying the last coat, I'll let the guitar uh, hang up to dry and cure for at least 24 hours before I'll proceed with spraying my clear coats. The clear coat that I'm going to be using is Centurion's water-based 2K polyurethane in a matte sheen. So the first thing I have to do is thoroughly stir up the uh, the main component of this product which is the polyurethane uh, with a matte sheen. And then once that's done I can then carefully mix into it the hardener, which is mixed in at about a 10% ratio. So what I have to do is very slowly um, pour that into the polyurethane as I'm stirring it so that it won't clump up or lump up, which can happen when you're mixing these two-part uh, polyurethane products together. And then once that's done, I can then filter it into my spray gun. These 2K polyurethane products and uh, especially Centurion they can be really thick once you get them mixed up. As a result I have to use the largest needle and nozzle combination I have for my spray gun which in this case is two millimeters. And when I spray it sometimes I, I have no choice but to thin it depending on the atmospheric conditions that I'm working in. I'm always going to test on scrap first to make sure that I have everything uh, adjusted correctly in the right viscosity so that it's not splattering when I spray it. However, if it does, I can always thin it down a little bit. But I'm going to spray it uh, the same way I did the sealer and the paint. I'm going to apply each coat about 20 to 30 minutes apart. And after each coat dries, I'll inspect the surface to make sure that it's uh, as perfect as possible. If I see any little dust specks or texture, anything like that, I can, if I want to, do a little bit of level sanding, especially as I approach my final coats. And the goal is, when I spray my last coats, I want that to go down as smooth as possible. So I may spray more than the normal, you know, five coats or so just because I want to make sure that that last coat is absolutely perfect with no dust uh, specks, no um, texture or anything like that. 
Okay guys, well that's basically what's involved with spraying a paint and clear coat finish on this particular guitar. Now I know some of you are probably wondering, well what about level sanding and buffing and all that stuff? Well, it wasn't necessary with this particular guitar because I was shooting for a flat matte sheen. If I had been going for something like a semi-gloss or a high-gloss shine, then yes, I would probably do some level sanding, uh, polish sanding, and then I would have buffed it up to a high-gloss shine. However, in this case, because I'm going for that matte sheen, it wasn't really necessary. And you're probably wondering, well, what about dust particles and uh, texture or waviness in the surface? You still can get that when you're spraying a uh, flat or satin sheen finish. So how do I deal with that? Well, I deal with it um, proactively. What I do is I make sure that I have the material that I'm spraying at the right viscosity. And I make sure that my spray guns are set up to spray that viscosity and to do so as smooth as it possibly can. And this is something that has taken some time and effort and testing to get those settings just right. And even though I've done the testing and, and I have a pretty good idea of how to set up my gun and to uh, thin the products that I'm spraying, each time I do it, I still have to tweak some things because of the atmospheric conditions that I'm working in. Now to eliminate dust particles and stuff like that, as I showed in the video, I've got two powerful dust extraction systems which remove the dust from the shop. Now, as I said earlier, I was gonna mention some uh, keys that you should uh, adhere to when applying finishes on your guitar. These are sort of rules of thumb and I'm gonna give them to you off the top of my head, so bear with me. But first of all, you're going to need high quality spray equipment. And I'm referring mainly to the guns that you're using to spray. In truth, if you are looking to purchase a good quality spray equipment uh, for your workshop, you're probably going to have to spend somewhere between at least $300 and $800 to get a good quality uh, uh, spray gun. And I use, uh, as I demonstrated in this video, two different guns, one for applying paint, one for applying my clear coats. And that's mainly because when I apply the paint, I like to thin the paint as much as I can to the point where it just goes down uh, opaque. Uh, if I were to thin it even more, it would be transparent, but I, I like to get it thinned down because it atomizes very nicely and it lays down really, really smooth but its durability isn't critical. So when you thin it, you're also kind of weakening its durability. That's okay with paint because I'm gonna put a clear coat over the top of that. That's why when I spray my clear coats, I like to spray them as thick as they can, uh, come out of the can. And that means I have to use a different gun with a larger needle and nozzle. But I have it dialed in to where it sprays, it atomizes beautifully and it sprays perfectly uh, onto the surface. So to do that, what you have to, to do first is you need to test on scrap or cardboard or whatever to make sure that you've got the gun dialed in to lay the, the, the material down as smooth as possible for its viscosity. And another uh, important rule of thumb is you have to make sure your equipment is as clean as you can get it. And I have people asking me all the time, can I, do I need to clean after every coat? You don't absolutely have to, you don't have to fully disassemble your gun and, and clean it out. But I will say that's good practice to be in. And, and modern guns are pretty easy to take apart and clean. So there's really no uh, excuse for not cleaning it out after you've sprayed each coat. Um, but you can let it sit as long as you make sure that the needle and the nozzle are as clean as possible, as well as the airways through the gun. And really what that means is you've got to clean it out after every single coat that you apply. Uh, the re and if you don't, the, what's going to happen is you're going to get material that will cake up around the needle and the nozzle and probably where the air comes out to atomize the fluid. And when that happens, as you're spraying, at some point, a piece of that dry material is gonna flake off and shoot out 
and land on the surface that you're spraying. Um, and I've seen it happen many, many times. So it is a problem and it is a good reason why you should uh, clean out your gun after each coat. Also, when you're pouring your material into the gun, when you're loading it up, you wanna run it through a filter pre-filter it before it gets into the gun. Otherwise, if there's any um, crusties from around the rim of the container that stores it, those are gonna land inside the finish, they're gonna pass through your gun and they're gonna shoot out and land on the surface. So you wanna make sure that it is filtered as thoroughly as possible so that the only thing that you're atomizing is the liquid itself and none of the little dried particles. With regards to viscosity, I try to spray my seal coats as well as my final clear top coats as thick as possible. I try to avoid thinning those to get them through my spray gun. Instead, I prefer to use a larger needle and nozzle combination so that I can effectively atomize those products when I spray them. And the reason for that is because with the res uh, regards to the seal coat, when you apply that as thick as possible, it lays down a nice smooth surface to apply the paint to later on. And then when I apply my clear coats, if you have to thin your clear coats to get them through the gun, one of the uh, downsides is that you're actually weakening the durability of your clear coats. So in order to uh, maintain good durability, you have to spray more coats than you normally would. With this 2K polyurethane that I used, five coats is all you need. But if you thinned it, if you thin it down to get it through your gun, you're gonna to have to spray many more coats. And that just takes a lot more time. And it increases the potential for runs and drips and all kinds of other errors that can occur. So I try to keep the seal coats as well as my clear coats as thick as they are when they come out of the can. When it comes to paint, however, I like to thin it down somewhat so that I can use the smallest needle that I have on my spray gun. And the reason for that is it atomizes it to a much finer particulate, which lays down very smooth. And that can be really beneficial, especially if you're doing multicolor effects like you know a two or three color burst. You'll get that really soft edge where the two colors are blending over. There's no splatter. So with paint, it's fine to thin it down so that you can use a smaller needle, but then when you apply your uh, sealer and your clear coats, I just like to do it with that bigger needle and nozzle to get it really thick as I spray it down. That means fewer coats. Before you start to apply even the sealer to the wood, you need to make sure that the surface has been sanded to perfection. I know a lot of folks think that it's acceptable to layer on sealer coats or even their clear coats later on to try to hide flaws that will appear in the wood, but it's just not a good idea to do it that way because the more coats that you have to apply, the longer it's gonna take for the product to cure. And we're talking in some cases, you know, if you're using 1K products, it can take a month or more for those products to fully cure. And as they're drying and curing, they're shrinking. So no matter how hard you try to cover up a flaw, as soon as you spray it, it may look like you've uh, covered it up and, and hidden it pretty well, but then a week or a month down the road, you'll start to see those flaws telegraphing up through the finish. So you need to make sure that the surface is as perfect as you can get it before you even start to apply your sealer. And that means sanding to at least 220 grit. I like to go even higher to 320 or 400. And the reason for that is I can see the scratches from 220 grit. And I can see those telegraph up through my seal coats. So uh, if I go to 400, the surface is much smoother and that just makes it a lot easier as I continue to apply uh, the products as I'm finishing the guitar. As I said earlier, it really isn't necessary to scuff sand between coats. I find that if you're applying each of your coats within about 20 to 30 minutes, they'll bond together just fine. You don't have to worry about scuffing the surface to uh, increase the tooth of that previous coat so that the next coat will lay down and, and adhere better. 
If you do it, like I said, at 20 minutes apart, you'll be fine. However, you may notice after spraying a coat, you could get some dust particles or maybe some texture that you don't like. In that case, it is okay to very lightly scuff sand the surface to try to remove those flaws. In that case, you're gonna to wanna to try to do it with like a 320 or a 400 grit sandpaper and be extremely careful as you sand because you could sand right through it. But then you would apply your next coat and hopefully that one would go down even smoother. So uh, when I'm trying to apply these products, my goal is that the last coat of each of the products, the sealer, the paint, and the clear coat, is perfect when it dries with no dust uh, specks, no runs, no drips, no flaws of any kind in the surface. And sometimes that means having to apply more than the prescribed number of coats. I just will keep going until I get it exactly perfectly correct. When it comes to spraying matte or satin sheens, if you do everything correctly, as I've demonstrated in this video and as I've explained, you should be able to walk away from your last coat and call it done. If, however, you're doing a semi-gloss or a gloss, you are likely going to have to level sand, polish sand, and then buff out the clear coat once that's uh, fully cured. And that's a whole different uh, process. And I didn't cover it in this video since I was spraying a matte sheen. But um, I have talked about this in previous videos before. And if I can find the links, I'll post them up above so that you can check those out if your goal is to do a uh, semi-gloss or a high-gloss sheen. Okay, well, I've covered a lot in this video, and I hope that you've uh, learned something and are inspired by some of what I've talked about and are thinking maybe you should try doing a finish like this yourself. Uh, at any rate, um, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope I've earned your subscription. And if you guys would like to help to support the channel so I'll keep making these videos, be sure to head over to eGuitarPlans.com and you can purchase plans for guitars and the tools that we use to make guitars. Or you can visit my YouTube merch shelf, which is displayed below the description for this video and purchase those same plans there as well as some t-shirts. So. You know, until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for the next episode.